In this video, we're going to look at one of the very useful applications of energy, and that is power. You've likely heard of this before. Power is measured in watts. When you look at a light bulb, it usually has a power rating. If you look at a motor, it usually has a power rating in watts, maybe kilowatts. So what is a watt? Well, a watt is going to be a joule per second. This is useful because a lot of times when we're talking about energy, we might talk about the amount of energy in food or the amount of energy burned in a workout, if we're talking about biologic energy. We might also talk about the amount of electrical energy a home uses in a month in order for people to be built. But it's really hard to talk about that without any context of time. Because I might say, I've eaten 2,000 calories. If I say, I ate that in an hour, that means something very different from if I ate that in a day. It matters how much energy is moving per unit of time. And so when we look at power, we can take any of our energy equations. So I could say work, remember that was force times distance. I could take that work over time. If I took that over time, I could take force times distance over time. That would give me power. If I wanted to think about the power that I'm getting out of maybe a waterfall, well, I'm going to think about, well, what's falling? Well, I've got a mass that's falling, so it's going to fall a certain height, and it's going to be falling due to gravity. If I look at that, well, I've got potential energy. And if I look at that over time, per second, it's, it's over T, for time, then I've got power. If I think about a wind turbine, I'm going to have a certain mass of wind that's going to be moving at a certain velocity. The wind speed is going to matter. So one half mv squared, that's my kinetic energy. Well, I could look at that over time as well. And for that, I could get power. I could even look at something like a steam turbine. A steam turbine might be moving, and it might be difficult to measure how much steam is going through at a given moment, but it might be pretty easy to measure the angular velocity of that. And so I could take that one half, and I might be able to figure out the rotational inertia. I could take that and get rotational energy. And if I just take that over time, I get power. And all of these, all of these are going to be the same power. None of these will be a different kind of power. Power is always power. It's going to be energy over time. And so this is a very useful way to bring a lot of these concepts together, a lot of these energies together. So then if I think about this, I can really define power as being energy over time. Or if I look back at my work equation, force times distance over time, what's distance over time? Well, that would be a velocity. So as long as I have a constant velocity, I can also say power is force times velocity. Let's say I've got a tow truck. So I've got a tow truck towing a car here. And let's say it's moving at a constant velocity of, 16, let's say, 16 meters per second. And it's tugging this, this rope that's pulling the car has a tension, a force of tension of 3,000 newtons. What would be the power that this, that this tow truck is having to output in order to tow this car? Well, I can take that force of tension, that's going to be a force, 3,000, times 16. And that'll give me the amount of power that this engine has to put out. That would give me 48,000 watts, or 48 kilowatts. Another type of power measurement, uh, one that we use in the United States, is horsepower. You might have heard this before. And this is going to be a pretty significant factor when we look at something like a tow truck or like a semi. Because any car can put out, you know, maybe 200,000 joules of energy, but it might take a while to put that energy out. It might take a while to use that energy. We might need to be able to tow this certain amount of mass at a certain velocity. Well, that's going to require a specific power output. So if our engine can't put that power out, then we can't tow that. Think of a little sedan trying to tow an airplane. That's not going to work. You might need a, a much larger vehicle for that. So then let's put this into action with something like power generation. Maybe we've got a waterfall. And we put a water wheel on that waterfall. It's a terrible drawing, but you get the idea. 
and I've got that water has a mass of, let's just say 45 kilograms, is able to fall per second. So 45 kilograms per second. And then I've got falling, 9.8 meters per second squared. And then I can give it a height. Let's say I've got a height of 10 meters. So a decent sized waterfall. How much power could I get out of that? What, what would be my maximum power that I could get out of that? Of course, no motor, no power generation is going to be perfectly efficient, but how much could I theoretically get out of that? Well, that's just going to be power equaling mgh over time. And since I'm saying 45 kilograms per second, well, then I've got 45, that's, that's my time and my mass together. So I take that 45 times 9.8 times 10. That's going to give me 4,410 watts. That's actually a pretty good power generator. That could keep one or two houses powered pretty much all day. Now, how about something like a wind turbine? I could have the wind blowing through. And again, I'm going to consider the mass of the wind that's blowing. Let's say it's got a mass of 42 kilograms of wind is going to hit a wind turbine. And let's give it a velocity. Let's say it's got a velocity of 20 meters per second. That would be a very windy day. How much energy could I get out of that? Let's say 42 kilograms, again, per second. Every second, 42 kilograms of air is moving through that turbine. That would be a fairly large turbine, but we've seen large turbines before. We've ever driven through Indiana. And so that's just going to be my kinetic energy over time. I'm saying 42 kilograms per second, so I've got 1 half mv squared per time. That's already taken care of by the 42. So 1 half times 42 times 20 squared. That's going to be 8,400 watts. There we go. So power calculations are generally pretty straightforward. We just have a lot of different ways that we could figure them out. So whenever you're tackling a problem dealing with power, all you're going to be looking for is what is the energy or the force going through this. If you've got the energy, you just divide that by some amount of time. It's got to be seconds. We're always going to have to convert into seconds. And then if you've got just a force, start looking for a velocity.